on the occasion when the discussion was how to get more people digitally included, it emerged that the new National Payment Act was high on the mind of the financial technology players. While regulators played catch up, the digitalization of money moved on. We had a lot of, uh, of, of interoperability between the different telecoms, which was one of the biggest problems. Once that was bridged, now people could be able to send money from one telecommunication company to the other. And along came the digital wallets, which enable you to withdraw money and pay your bills without going to a bank. Speaking of the new National Payment System Act, some parts of this law are being challenged as disabled for innovation, which fintechs are typically. As part of the requirements for you to apply, you need two year audited books. Where am I going to cook the difference? So these are the, again the, the small gray areas. Then of course the other issue that's not touched uh, because of the application fees and, and they are different. You have the application fee, the license fee, the annual fee, and then I have taxes to consider. So all this is just waiting on a startup after six months. So it just doesn't make sense. But looking at it from the regulatory standpoint, digitalization with or without regulation is taking center stage and cannot be taken lightly anymore. And we have to understand that um, payments really pose systemic risk. Um, I think by, as of 2019, half of Uganda's GTB, uh, half of the transaction, half, most of the mobile money transactions, actually the entire sum of the mobile money transactions constituted half of Uganda's GDP. So that poses a systemic risk and there is need to have that regulated. So we, it would mean that um, if people, it's, it's only serious people who should be considered. So, the financial technology players want reforms in the law, but the law on its part has come and there is no going back.